Okay, in this video, I wanna talk about why it's so scary and why it's so important. If you're dating somebody that you've identified or that has been identified with borderline personality disorder, why the no contact is so scary, especially one aspect of no contact that really makes it have a punch. I'm gonna use an example from a client I've had recently. I'm not gonna mention names, but it's somebody that called me and said that uh, it hit all the markers for borderline. It was, it started fast, very intense. They were idealized, a lot of time together, addicted to one another, matched up with each other mentally, spiritually, physically, sexually, everything, quickly. Used phrases like, um, the man that I wanna be with forever, a person that I've always looked for. The term soulmate was used. Everything was going along beautifully. Also in her past, she mentioned that she struggled with suicidal thoughts at a young age. Also mentioned in her past, she had an unstable, emotionally unstable mother that left her feeling off balance. It's also controlling. So you're starting to see the check marks. One of the biggest check marks was not just how it started, was not just the past, was not just the idealized and the fireworks, but then after a few months, suddenly, there was a drop in intimacy. Like on a scale of one to 10, with a borderline, the first few months, it's usually a 15. And then suddenly for some reason it drops down to maybe like a 10 or a nine. Still high, but not what you were used to. You would usually pick it up. The non-borderline would usually pick up that, that shift in intimacy and try to close the gap. The only problem is a lot of times that shift, that downgrade in intimacy, is because they've just realized they've just realized you're serious about being with them long term. The problem is most borderlines have a very very deep fear of abandonment to the point that it's not just a fear they're going to be abandoned by the person they love, it's an expectation. So when you start taking abuse or disrespect or you start assuring them that you're going to be there forever to the point that they actually believe you, it's like it triggers a fear in them and they think maybe I'm making a mistake. They're also starting to get uncomfortable because they don't know how to do long-term, calm, loving, healthy, fully empathetic relationships. It's not something they're used to. So they start getting uncomfortable. And then you've assured them that no matter what, in some way or another, you've usually assured them that you're gonna be there forever. In this particular case, he even told her, he proposed to her, when he was proposing to her, she said yes, but when he was proposing, he kept assuring her, no matter what, I'm gonna love you forever. I'm gonna be, here for you with whatever you need forever. Well, suddenly he noticed a drop in attraction. Then he chased, further drop in attraction. He chased not with confidence, not with acceptance. He chased with desperation and pain to the point that she needed to make sure that there were mental health professionals available. People were talking about it's not safe to leave him alone. So while she was showing concern for his mental state, she was putting as much distance there as she could. She was even telling him, this is never gonna work. We're not meant to be together. We're not gonna get back together. I'm gonna drop you and block you and unfollow you from everything because I think it's just gonna be too painful for you. In spite of it all, he kept chasing her. Even in our call, after all the check marks were, were listed, at one point I even said, have you ever heard of borderline personality disorder? And he said, no, but somebody mentioned to me, someone in her family mentioned to me something. And I think it was something about disorder and personality. And I said, was it dissociative personality disorder? It used to be called multiple. It's very, very similar to borderline. They're both an identity crisis. So another check mark. In spite of everything, I said, what you need to do is reclaim your strength. You're not making yourself more attractive by chasing after her with one desperate plea of eternal love after another. You need to remind her that you have a strength and a confidence and a purpose and a passion and a plan for your life that is greater than just her. This is not attractive to her. He even said right before she broke up with him, he told her again, I just want you to know nothing can change the fact that I'm going to be here for you forever. That is the single worst sentence you can tell somebody with borderline personality disorder. So flash forward, he calls me, we have a conversation. All the boxes, not some, all the boxes check off. I tell him, you need to reclaim some strength. Send the no contact. He said, I'm already in no contact. I said, well, what, was your, what did it look like, the clean slate message? And he said, I told her I accept it, and I'm sorry for how I handled the breakup. That's one part of it. In this situation, what you need to do is let that other person know, I've had some time to think about it. 
And you know what? You're probably, probably is a key word. You're probably right. Maybe, maybe is a key word. Maybe we're not the best fit long term. Because what happens is when they're breaking up with you, when they break up with you, you're down here. They've already been thinking about it for a while. So you were already, you were already here and you just didn't know it. Then they broke up with you. Then you chase them. Then you really, ch you just keep dropping. As soon as you say, I accept it, you freeze. It's like you stop dropping, they stop losing attraction for you because you've accepted it. But when you let them know, hey, I've had some time to think about it, you might be right. Maybe we're not the best fit long term. Even if you don't mean it. Because now you're in agreement. You're letting them know. And keep in mind, you haven't changed anything. You've only agreed to what they've already said they want. In this case, she didn't even say, I think we might not be a best fit. She said, I know we're not a good fit. She said, it's over. So I was just encouraging him. Let, let her know. It's like she just asked you to leave the house. Think of her heart as a house. She just asked you to leave. Instead of leaving, you went outside. She shut the door. You turned around and looked through the window and said, please let me back in. Please let me back in. Please let me back in. To the point that she started locking doors. Then you kept pleading to the point that she had to get a mental health professional involved. That's like she's piling furniture in front of the door. She knows she doesn't want you back in now for sure because you won't accept that she asked you to leave. All I'm trying to get people to do in that situation is at least get off the porch, walk into the yard. You don't have to be angry, don't be angry. You don't have to be devastated, don't be devastated. But it's like I'm trying to get people to understand the importance of turning around, looking through the window and saying, I understand, maybe I, maybe I shouldn't be living there. And calmly, with confidence, start looking around and start walking down the road, looking at other houses. When you do that, what do you think happens? They take the furniture away from the door. If anything is gonna make them start unlocking things, it's you not pressing, not camping out on the porch, going, I'm still here if you need me. When you start to walk away with confidence and with warmth, that makes them even actually crack the door open and peek out and say, well, I'm not positive I want you to go away. It's just you were freaking me out because you wouldn't accept what I was telling you. It's a key part. But normally with borderline, and it's the same way with narcissist relationships, they're so addictive and the relationship was so intense. That, that particular breakup is the hardest situation to get the other person to just do this. And again, I'm only trying to get people to acknowledge what they've already been told. When you do that, especially with a borderline, go back to what I said, their biggest fear to the point that it's not even just a fear, it's an expectation that the person they're supposed to be with is going to abandon them. When you make eternal pledges of love, no matter what happens, you've just identified, I'm not that man who's strong enough to walk away from you. I'm the man who's weak enough to take disrespect and to be de devalued and to being downgraded. I'm the man that no matter how you treat him, I'm gonna prove my love. You cannot prove your love to a borderline by taking abuse. Believe me, I even tried it myself. You prove your strength to a borderline by accepting with confidence that you don't need anyone. You want to be with them, but you don't need to be with anyone. And it sets you up for the perfect response. Because normally when you tell the borderline, I accept it, and maybe you're right. It just took me a while to think about it. It took me a while to realize, but the truth is, I don't want to be with anyone who doesn't want to be with me. So it's the perfect setup. At least half the time, the borderline will come back calmly and say, I'm glad you finally accept this. What made you realize it? Because you've triggered that fear of abandonment. When they ask you what made you realize that, it's the perfect opportunity for you to say, I just simply realized I don't want to be with anybody who doesn't know they want to be with me. Do you hear how strong that sounds compared to please, please, please? That's attractive. Suddenly you look like the man that they've been looking for their entire life. The right man for them or the right woman, depending on the situation, but usually it's a woman if it's borderline, that person that they, they know they're in love with is going to be the one that shows strength enough to live without them. If you refuse to let them know you can live without them because you're afraid it's really gonna end it, it's really gonna damage things, it's really gonna make things worse, you're not gonna get them back. They'll think words like pathetic, they'll think words like weakling, they'll think words like repulsive. If you refuse to accept that they might not ever come back to you and you can't show strength in that situation, they start to feel those kind of just sheer contempt. 
the strange thing is they'll even, I'll even have the client say, it feels like they don't miss me at all. It feels like they hate me and I don't know why. I just keep begging to have another chance. And I'll tell them it's because you're begging to get another chance. These situations are the most difficult because my heart breaks for the people going through it. I'm trying to tell them what they need to do, but they're also the most terrified. And then in some cases, the person's already started to come back because just the no contact has made them start to put out feelers. And, they, and they'll say, but I don't wanna make it worse. They're already starting to come back. Well, even if they come back, if you can't find the strength to tell them, maybe we're not the best fit long-term, even when they come back, they will remember what they got away with. They will remember how disrespectfully they treated you. And they will remember how easily they came back. So even when they've started to come back, when you tell them that, hey, I agree, I don't need to be with you, I wanna be with you, you're still only adding to the attraction. It's just scary. But look at it this way, that fear that you feel when you, when you don't wanna send that last part of the message is directly tied to what makes them rethink how strong you are. What makes you afraid is that you're risking something. You wanna hold on to sympathy, you wanna hold on to uh, you know, showing them how loyal you are, you, you wanna hang on to the fact that they're gonna change their feeling, so maybe that shows they love you. They change their feeling because you've, you've stayed silent enough that they think, okay, maybe I could really lose them. That fear of abandonment triggers. But when you let them come back without ever having the strength to tell them, I don't need you, I just want you, I don't need to be with anyone, they're gonna leave you sooner next time. With the borderline, you need to consistently show and communicate and express and build your own sense of confidence in who you are. But I wanted to make this video because it's consistently a concern that I have. I had one guy that I really, I love the guy. He sent me 187 emails in less than a week. Every one of them. Are you, are you sure this is gonna work? Well, I can't be certain. I didn't say I'm positive. Yeah, but you said you were really sure. I said the key to it was living like you have confidence. The key to it is acting like you're not desperate for them. 187 emails. And I'm not making fun of them. These personalities are highly addictive. It's very scary to think about losing them forever. So I'm not judging. I just wanted to make this video because honestly, in those 187 emails, I was just trying to reassure him of the same thing repeatedly. That's the case with, with a few of my clients. So I'm putting this out there. So if you just need to put it on loop and listen to it and let the principle soak in, listening to anything multiple times. A lot of people I know do it with Coach Lee videos. It's, it's a good idea. If you can find a Coach Lee video that hits what you need, I'll be the first to tell you. Put it on, hit repeat. It lets the truth or principle really soak in. So it's just not something you understand. It's something you believe. So that was the purpose behind this. I hope it helps. I am pulling for you. Believe me. If you're going through this, I know what it feels like. And I'm, I'm telling you the principles that I've seen work over and over and over again. It's just scary. But it's scary because you're shifting your approach, which will cause them to reassess your attraction, which will cause an increase in attraction. I can promise you, doing what you've done to get here, it's not going to improve anything long term. And I think usually deep down, people know that. It's just a scary place to be in. But I hope this helps. I'm, I'm putting together a series for borderline personality disorder and narcissistic abuse and personality disorder. So keep an eye out for that. I'm hoping to have that done this week. Feel free to post in the comments below questions because I like to tell people too, hey, you can go to this video and look in the comment section. So if you ask me questions in the comment section, I'll not only answer them there, but then when other people come, they can peruse through the Sorry, peruse. But when other people come, they can read through the comment section, find some good questions that are relevant to them and, and already have the answer there. So feel free to ask questions in the comment section. I will get to them as quickly as I can, usually within 24 hours. But I hope this helps and thanks a lot. I'll talk to you again soon.